coming up on My Vancouver. We tickle your taste buds with a classic Italian pasta dish that's cooked to perfection. We head to the style experts to see what's trending in denim. Take you inside BC Children's Hospital to learn more about Jeans Day. And catch up with para-athlete Braden Dolfo. Hi and welcome to My Vancouver. I'm your host Mia Jagpal here at the Museum of Vancouver, a fabulous place to come to learn more about the city. And if you wanted to learn more about me, I can tell you that I love pasta. Love it. And in this week's Eat segment, we're in the kitchen with LaQuertia's head chef, Lucas Syme, cooking up one of my favorites, spaghetti carbonara. I'm Lucas Saim, chef owner of La Quercia Restaurant. We're cooking spaghetti carbonara today, one of my favorite dishes. When you have a, a really properly done carbonara, it's uh, sort of greater than the sum of its parts. It's, uh, it's truly a very nice dish. Beginning with pancetta. We just need a few thin slices of the pancetta. If you don't have pancetta, bacon will suffice, no problem. So, when I slice the pancetta, basically, we want to keep it fairly thin, fairly small. We're seasoning pasta with the pancetta. It's not the driving ingredient of the dish on its own. I've chopped the pancetta, now I'm going to season the pasta water. So essentially when you season the pasta water, this is the only opportunity to get salt into the pasta. So, definitely, like the sea. I'm going to turn on my brunt burner. About a medium high heat. You don't want it too hot because you'll burn the pancetta, but you uh, definitely have to have it hot enough to get the fat to render. So, a roughly a nice handful. I mean, it's really up to you if you want a little more or a little less, but uh, I'm just gonna add the pancetta. The fat's going to come away from the meat. So essentially, I'm gonna use 50 grams, roughly, per serving. So, timer set for 11 minutes. I do just a nice, gentle spiral to put the pasta in. You wanna make sure that the pasta goes into the water, roughly, all together. So at this point, we have rendered the fat from the pancetta. Now we need to make an emulsification. We use the pasta water, just about one ladle, Pulling the pan away from the heat. A little swirl. We need to have our egg yolk. So, approximately one egg yolk per person. And then we have a little Parmesan cheese and just a hint of water. You can crack a little black pepper in here now. Timer is about to go off. And I'm going to drain nice and easy. We've left ourselves time so that uh, we won't be overcooking it. In it goes. Strain off the water. Of course, never ever rinse your pasta. So, um, you lose all the crucial starch that we want, that we're gonna want to have to hold our sauce together. So, pasta's in. So I'm going to toss gently, coat in the noodle. Something's gonna fly out of there, it's just gonna happen. Next up, we have egg yolk, parmesan, and black pepper. And as we toss, we're just gonna gently pour in the egg mixture. The egg is going to cook from the residual heat of the pasta water that we have in here. We no longer need to have the elements on, so, now we have a nice emulsification. I'm going to use a little Parmesan cheese. That pasta is almost finished. One last crucial step, the seasoning, black pepper. And if you'd like, just a touch more Parmesan. And here we have spaghetti carbonara.
Whatever you do, do it in denim. On April 26, support BC Children's Hospital by purchasing your button or lapel pin and sporting your favorite pair of jeans. Last year's event raised over $1.3 million. Visit jeansday.ca for details on how to get involved. One of the hardest things to shop for is a pair of jeans. Finding that perfect pair can take hours, even days. Well, in this week's arts and culture segment, we went to the experts for tips and tricks for buying jeans to ensure that on your next shopping experience, the only thing left feeling blue is the denim in your bag. Jeans are such a great staple because they're the, the perfect balance between fashion and functionality. You can take them from day to night, they can be dressed up, they can be dressed down. Um, it's a really great thing to have in your wardrobe and can really be paired with anything. When trying jeans on, you really want to look for something that maybe is not riding too low. Maybe try sitting down in them so that the rise isn't, um, isn't sliding down. Um, maybe something that's a little sitting a little bit more comfortable. Um, at your back, nothing that's gaping too much. Um, yeah, you'd re you really want to be comfortable in the jeans and just know that they will over time mold to your body. They will stretch a little bit with wear, so you want them to be a little bit fitted right off the bat and just that you're, that you're comfortable in them. Spring trends for both men and women, you're, we're seeing a lot of colored denim, so you're going get, to be getting a lot of pastel blues and oranges and reds. Um, it's really becoming popular for both men and women, um, even sort of like chino style jeans. But really for men going forward, it's going to be nice, slim, basic, raw denim. It's, there's a whole culture behind the raw jeans and it's really popular for us. For women, um, high-rise is really popular, so high-rise skinnies, we're even seeing a little bit of high-rise flare, um, but all around, all year, um, a really great slim pair of dark jeans is great, um, and it's really versatile. Some things that are new and sort of interesting, you're seeing a lot of wax denim, so a lot of time they'll coat the jeans with a, um, a wax or a resin coating and they'll actually bake them so it sets onto the, to the cotton. And it kind of gives that really cool leathery, um, like worn in look once you start breaking them in. So those ones, those ones are really interesting, um, something to watch out for. For a good all-round pair of jeans, you're looking for a great fit. Um, if you're going to only be spending money on one really great pair that you're going to have for years, you want to make sure that the fit is great, that it's um, a really great classic jean. Um, you can throw in a couple other colors or grays or black if you, if you want to mix it up a little bit, but a great dark indigo classic, something that's a little bit slimmer fitting, is a really great classic for men and women. When buying a pair of jeans, um, something you can expect to be spending is anywhere between 150 to 250 is pretty basic for a premium pair of jeans. Sometimes you can be paying for the label, but in, in a great, say, Japanese pair of jeans, you're really, you're really getting the quality of the denim. You're, they're being made on vintage looms and they're all handmade. They're made with a lot more love. Um, some other jeans um, have a really special washing process done to them, so that can take more time and that's definitely going to up your cost. To care for your jeans, it definitely depends on the material, on the brand. Um, for instance, a lot of raw denim is untreated and un unwashed, so the idea is to wear them in for as long as you can without washing them. A lot of people like to put them in the freezer to help kill some of the odor-causing bacteria, to hang them outside, to air out a little bit. For other jeans that have already been washed with a, like a chemical processing or, or with water um, and by hand, those ones you can wash a little bit sooner. We suggest turn them inside out and wash with cold water, hang dry. I just love the feeling of helping people find something that they're really going to be happy with and the fit is great and um, there's definitely something to be said for buying that like one perfect pair of jeans. Running until April 29th, the Vancouver Art Gallery holds a rich collection of paintings from the 1960s that reflect the diversity and strength of this tumultuous era. Featured artists include Jack Bush, Jack Chambers, and Jean-Paul Lemieux. 
Now that we've shown you tips for buying jeans, on April 26th, you can wear them in support of Jeans Day. Started over 20 years ago, this fundraiser helps support BC Children's Hospital. And in this week's secret, we learn a little more about this special day. So Jeans Day this year is April 26th and it was started back in 1990 by a man named Jeff Schultz and his idea was that people could wear their jeans, it was fun, it was easy, and raise money for BC Children's Hospital. So that's been going for 22 years now and it's raised 15 million dollars over that time period. The money goes to what we call Excellence in Child Care Fund and um, it really provides uh, support for research, uh, care, equipment and those things that allow us to be excellent in what we do. We treat approximately 81,500 children every year. Angela's son Mario has been a patient at BC Children's Hospital for over two years. He was diagnosed with Langerhans cell histiocytosis, and they've seen firsthand the benefits of money raised by Jeans Day. I think for me, my heart was sort of in the Jeans Day a little bit more because of that, that it covers a lot of bases because there's so many kids in need for all, all different diseases and all, you know, disorders, things like that. I mean, it's just, there's such a broad range. This disease is not a cancer, it's a blood cell disease, so it acts very similar to a cancer, so th but it's a cell that we all have, so they can't eliminate it from your body. You need that cell, you just need it to act properly. His was overacting, and then it was going into his bones and um, causing these slight tumors that would cause holes. I feel like fundraisers that sort of are the whole package where they kind of can d deliver money to all departments I think is so great because when there's a situation like this it's something so rare it just feel I feel like those rare diseases and maybe those rare machines that are needed to do research in those areas come from the fundraisers like Jeans Day that are bigger and broader. He was there for two and a half years and still right to the end was still having a lot of trouble with um, taking the chemo you know getting poked and they were always trying to figure out how we're gonna help him they didn't just say, oh, Mario, seriously. <laughs> I would say it. I would say, like, Mario, like, you've done this. Honestly, I think a hundred times or over a hundred times he was poked. And he would be nervous and cry every time. And those nurses were phenomenal. Well, they really helped me and distracted me so, so, that, um, so that the pokes wouldn't hurt and stuff. I'm feeling good now that the now that all the chemo's done and the thing is out. So now, if, so now if a soccer ball hits my ch hits my chest there, it won't hurt. Supporting Jeans Day is a great way to support the hospital, and it's fun, and it's easy and anybody can do it, and we just thank everyone so much. Some of the Canucks I met, because I met Henrik and Daniel, they donate, and um, once at school we, we um, were selling them some Jeans Day pins. It's really nice to help kids get better. I feel like I could not give back what they gave to me. I don't want to cry, but... It was a hard a hard time and I felt like here that he was safe and that no one was going to let anything happen to him and as hard as it was I was super confident. They looked beyond just that one illness and they so I felt really good and I can't give back enough. It's a really good place to help kids get better from their diseases like me.
On April 15th, join in the Vancouver Sun Run, the second largest time 10K run in the world. After you cross the finish line, get ready to dance with your fellow runners at the BC Place after party. When I was younger, I competed in track, even won myself a few ribbons, but never did I have the talent or the determination of the young athlete featured in this week's Faces and Places. Join us as we hit the track with para-athlete Braden Dolfo. The sport I am involved in is uh, track and field and I am on the uh, Canadian national team for uh, Paralympics and I've been doing it for about uh, seven years now. Oklahoma has always been around and it's uh, definitely hit me hard. It hit me hard at uh, five years old and um, it's definitely been a challenge to work through uh, the struggles of seeing around me and stuff like that. Um, it's narrowed my sight down to five percent and it leaves me in shock just sometimes of the things I'm able to do. And when I'm running on the track, I mean, I don't really think about my sight, I just think about getting down the track. He played every sport. Even though he was visually impaired, he was out on the soccer field every Saturday running. Uh, we even tried him in baseball one year. Uh, he was playing basketball and um, became very early on and we saw with his sight loss that he had a hard time picking up the ball when it would be hit at him in baseball. You know, for him it was an opportunity to compete against able-bodied um, athletes his own age where he didn't have to worry about there was a ball being hit at him or something being passed to him and he could compete with them at a really good level and so um, that's how we first got him involved when he was the age of 11 and he fell in love with it and uh, he's been at it ever since. At Worlds uh, 2011 in New Zealand I won a bronze medal and then recently in uh, November 2011, I won another bronze medal in the 100 meters. It's a big part of my life. I mean, it's definitely a stress reliever, but it's also just that uh, fact that you can go onto the track and it's just you, you in the track in the lane. And just to see how well you can improve over a year, a year's time or maybe more than that. And to see if you can reach the goals that you want to reach by the end of the year. Uh, through the years, we saw him grow and develop, and um, when he entered the Paralympic stream, we could really see that there was some possibilities there. And, you know, at 16 years old, to set Canadian records in high jump and long jump and 100 meters as a teenager, and he's not even in his prime yet. The goal right now is to go for the 100, 200, and long jump, and as well as the relay. Um, as far as after 2012, um, I'll probably have to sit down with my coach and talk about how that's going to look, but I'm thinking 2016 in Rio is where I'll really hit my peak and hopefully bring home a gold medal for Canada. Uh, when, you, when you're disabled or have a disability, it's easy to use it as an excuse not to do your best or try hard or step out of the box and really go for something. And so we're really proud of his ability, but we're more proud of his dedication and his willingness to risk to be the best that he can be, not use his disability uh, as a as a crutch. Uh, he wants people to look at him for his ability, not his disability. I've dreamed about uh, getting to the next level, but I would have never dream like dreamt about uh, doing it as a para-athlete. I've actually, before I came into the para stream, I never viewed myself as a disabled athlete. I always viewed myself as everybody else saw the world just as a normal sighted person. I mean, it's just, it's opened the doors to me really and given me, pretty much it's given me wings. And I'm trying to kind of just take an opportunity and just taking it as it's an opportunity for me to do well and uh, we'll see where it turns out. And that's all the time we have for on this edition of My Vancouver. If you have any comments or story suggestions, drop us a line at mycommunitytv at telus.com. I'm your host, Mia Jagpal, and we'll see you next time.